Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Today we're going to be joined by a very special guest. His name is Ramin. He's a former investment banker and strategist at a major Swiss investment bank. He's also the author of two books on finance and he's an extremely well-educated guy. So he's got a physics degree and a doctorate from the Imperial College in London and a postdoc from Oxford University. Ramin has a fantastic YouTube channel you guys should check out called Pension Craft, which focuses on macroeconomic investing, index funds, ETFs, and much, much more. So I'll link to his channel down below. Be sure to check out that channel and hit that subscribe button on his channel. So in this video, Ram is going to share with us some of his incredible investing wisdom and maybe even some investing tips. Well, my favorite, starting off with a global equity fund. So really, you can choose any of these. And because because they're all buying the same thing, there's a lot of competition and the fees are low. So I'd go for something like SSAC, which is the iShares Global Equity Tracker. And it actually tracks the MSCI All Country World Index, the Acqui Index. And the fee for that's 0.2%. So you can wow. literally buy all the stocks in the world for 0.2%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. As you buy, just buy the whole world. Um, do you know the average return on that approximately? Yeah, I mean, you'd expect that to be about 6% or 5 or 6% above yeah. inflation for the next however many years. And this is the kind of fund which I could buy and then just keep until I die and give it to my kids. And that's yeah. the way I think. What would I buy that I could keep forever? You know, I don't mm. trade in and out. You know, I just keep it for a very long time. Yeah. What do you think of the S&P 500, just the Vanguard, iShares, S&P 500? That's my well, personal favorite. the US favorite. outperforms about yeah. half the time, about 55% of the time. But, you know, 45% of the time, the rest of the world outperforms the US. And mm. just because it's been outperforming recently over the last decade, people are sucked into the idea that the US always outperforms. That's not true. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's worthwhile buying everything. Yeah. And not taking a tilt towards one region or, or another. Mm. Because, I mean, that used to be my job when I was a strategist. Yeah. You get it right some of the time. But if you want to take a tilt, you could always buy a bit of S&P. And that'll just tilt your portfolio slightly towards the US. But it's already, you know, like 55% of the, of the index, the global index. That's recency bias then again, because, yeah, the S&P has been outperforming recently. US stocks have been outperforming recently. And what's obviously happened previously, you think that's going to just extrapolate and continue to happen again. Like you said, that's not always the case. And, and I think what's interesting is with the S&P 500, especially 20, 25% at least of the weighting is from just the big tech stocks. So Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, these big tech stocks. And these have obviously had tremendous bull runs. That's a really rare thing to actually get trillion dollar companies, companies which have had that that sustainable competitive advantage over time and just kept compounding and growing. And that's why we've seen the S&P 500 get these incredible returns. That's one of the main things that's been dragging it up. Okay, so the second fund would be a global bond fund. So if you've got the whole equity market, why not buy the whole bond market? So for this one, I'd use something like SAGG, which is the iShares core global aggregate bond ETF which mm. it's just a global bond fund. And that one is only 0.1% per year is the fee. So very low fee. And that would be the kind of ballast of your ship. It would keep you steady. So if you don't want to take too much equity risk, you'd put some into the global bond market, not to generate return, but to generate safety. So if you're worried about equity markets crashing, this thing will not crash as much, or it may even gain a little bit when equity markets crash. So that would be your kind of safety play. Vanguard's got an equivalent one, which is uh, actually a fund, not an ETF, but it's the Vanguard Global Bond Index Fund. So that's 0.15% per year. So you can buy these very cheaply mm. and that would be the safety play. And then the third thing, which is slightly more risky, would be the Spider MSCI USA small cap value weighted ETF. So this, the idea here is with small cap value, it's kind of like your strategy, Ben, which is mm. to find single stocks which outperform, but it happens in a kind of mechanized way. Yeah, yeah, automated. So not these mega caps. These are the really tiny companies, but which are trading below their fair market value. And the idea is that the big players can't take this profit off the table because if they did, they'd end up buying the whole company. Whereas we as small investors, we can 
harvest that alpha. Now, now the fee for this one's slightly higher, 0.3%, because it's less liquid stocks. But this will be buying US small cap value, which historically, in all the back tests, in, performs incredibly well over a very long period of time. It's been awful recently over the last five years. But again, that's recency bias. The, the wild card play. A little bit of a wild card. <laughs> a little bit of a wild, yeah. I, I actually like, no, I actually like that fund a lot. My only issue with it would be is I see a lot of these, the funds, the way they actually pick these small cap stocks is they'll look at, a, let's say, low price to earnings ratio, low price to book ratio. And I feel 20, 30 years ago, yeah, that could work. You just buy a firm with a low PE ratio and then over time it'll correct and that will work. But I just feel today, I just feel that it's it's a lot more complicated to value a lot of companies. You've seen probably a few videos on my channel when I do valuation. It's a lot more difficult than just picking a PE ratio that's low. If they use a discounted cash flow, then that will make it a lot better. Is the management of the company, are they running the company unprofitable for five years, investing into sales and marketing to scale the company to a certain size, and then they're gonna monetize? like Facebook did, like Twitter did. Yeah, any young tech company, that's the strategy. And most traditional automated systems, they might not pick up that, that nuance. In general, it's still great to obviously, yeah, definitely be in the small caps because that's where the growth is. It's where the risk is also. If you have any comments on what we've discussed in today's video, please do comment below. Remember guys, if you do appreciate the value in this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. It helps out tremendously the channel. If you haven't joined the family yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn that notification bell on with that being said guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope you all have an incredible day and i'll see you in my next video invest safe